welcome back, you degenerates, to the number one gambling podcast show in the world. I'm Billy, Billy FFD, here with my long lost friend, Mr. Vacation Time, Mr. My Ty himself, Mr. Mo Watts. How was vacation, buddy? Prodigal Son has returned. <laughs> uh, it was fantastic. I drank, I played golf, I sat on the beach, I did the three B's. Beach, beer, and booze. Or I messed that up already. Beach, babes, and booze. It was phenomenal. I had a great time. I missed you. I missed my boys. I missed gambling. I was in a location in South Carolina where I could not legally gamble. And I just decided I was going to unwind and take a break from it all for a week. Uh, I was watching everything, chiming in and on Twitter. And I was just, I was in pain. I was hurting. I missed opening night of college basketball. Which was really tough to do. It was not as it was still great to sit there and watch, but wasn't quite the same as I would have liked it to have been. Uh, yeah, but it was great. It was a good vacay. It was much needed getaway. Yeah, you you couldn't have timed that more terribly. <laughs> what are you what are you gonna do? Especially because I went on a massive run that week. Yeah, you, I would, you couldn't have timed bullshit. it worse, buddy. What is that bullshit? <laughs> I can't even hop on and tailor anything on the heater <laughs> because I'm freaking out of 700 miles away the worst part is like the parlay account that i use was like i just missed a bunch of parlays that weekend before so like i had 20 dollars in it i couldn't even like give it to you for you to make anything off of i was like all right sorry bud <laughs> unbelievable absolutely um, awful yeah i'm glad you had fun you had the whole week to listen to taylor swift i know you love that You're listening to taylor swift right now yeah it's, he's not <laughs> even listening to me he's listening to t swift uh, I was, it would have been, for those watching on YouTube, it would have been a Taylor Swift background tonight, but I got vetoed because we wouldn't be able to stop staring at her. That It's called copyright infringement. It's kind of illegal. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think it's more than like one ten percent of everything we do. And uh, I will give her... Me, I will give I'm a her, businessman. I will give her 100% of me. She, yeah, I'm sure you would. Me, <laughs> not so much. Um, we're talking NFL this week. I have a couple college basketball plays at the end. Some early early lines came out. So uh, maybe by the end of the show, I might have another. We'll see. That's kind of what I do. I kind of just add and add and add until there's too many picks. But um, Sounds like a massive card Wednesday is coming up. Today's Wednesday. I, well, I'm talking about for next Wednesday. <laughs> oh, it might. It might. I, need it might a, I, I mean, my first card was huge. I had 11 plays. I was sitting there today when I posted the card today. I was like, ooh, this is pretty. It's Wednesday. We're going to have a few in here. I thought about doing a real big card last weekend on Saturday, but I just, there was a lot of lines I didn't like. And good thing I didn't. I went four and five in college basketball, and then the NFL did me dirty. Um, and that Sunday, college basketball was terrible. It was brutal. I say it every year. Like, I make my money Monday through Friday, and then I lose the, the weekend, just, just <laughs> so I can lose on the weekends. Um, then you get a chance to watch it all, and you're just like, oh, I'm going to bet on this now. Oh, I'm going to live bet this game. That's what made it worse is I was live betting, and like it just didn't work out the way I wanted. Like I bet the live Texas money line in football against Kansas. I was like, come on, baby. Fucking come on. Texas. You're going to give me Horns, plus, yeah. money. <laughs> plus money with Texas? Come on. You, everybody knows that Kansas is going to blow this. Right after, Kansas started blowing it. I'm like, oh, here we go, baby. We're looking Kansas good. Throwing it over time. Uh, like, Perfect. Kansas hits their win total for the year because of that game. Oh, man, I should have. I see that's the handicap I needed you here for. <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable. Freaking Arizona is sitting there right now. One win. They're a ha- they need half. They need one that's more true. to hit their win total. They're not, I don't think they're going to hit it unless they get a miracle. No. Um, as as we're recording this, I'm currently sweating out my addition, which is UCLA minus 26. They're up 20 right now, so it's only – First half is about to end. So how's that looking? Because I was actually running when you sent me that, so I'm very curious. Like, idiot! They're up twenty before the half's over. Oh fuck me! <laughs> God damn it! Come on, buddy, get with it. It's it's Wednesday. It's not Saturday. You can tell me. It's the LA. Um, kick me off, Miss Mo Watts. You've been gone too yes. long. Yes. I know you're. We itching. are back. It's the NFL. Dun 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 dun. We are back again. I am back from vacation. I'm back. Just as our boy Cam Newton loved to say, um, so we are going to kick it off. We're going to do. We got to take. We took a week off, so we got to get back to what we do best, right? We need to get back to where I dominate. I'm the king of the totals, right? Everyone knows me <laughs> as the king of the totals. So let's start there. 
Uh, we're going to start. Let's start with the game of the week, right? The Dallas Cowboys and the Kansas City Chiefs. Total right now is sitting at 56 and a half. Everyone's sitting there thinking, oh my God, these two offenses are starting to click into gear and everything again. Dallas had a clunker against Denver two weeks ago, but looked better last week. The Chiefs absolutely obliterated the Raiders the other night after looking like crap against the Giants and everything. Well, you know what? I'm taking the under 56 and a half in this game. This historically, since 2019, and in the NFL, over and under totals of 55 points or higher are 10 and 19 to the under, hitting it 65.5% of the time. When you get two teams like this, and we said this with college football earlier in the year, when you have two high profile teams, high prolific offenses, the comment you're going to think immediately in your head, it is going to be a shootout. It is going to be just throwing it down the field, verticals all day long. No, that's not going to be the case. This is going to be who can get the ball last. So that way we don't put up more scores. Clyde edwards Lair has a chance of coming back in this game. Cowboys both have Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott. This is going to be a run-featured game, I believe, for both of these teams because they're not going to want it to become a shootout. They're going to want to do everything in their power to keep this from being a high-scoring game, and the offenses are going to want to control the ball as much as they possibly can. Um, so that in trends with this right now, the under is 16 and five in Cowboys last 21 road games versus teams with a winning record. The under is also four and one in the Chiefs last five games as a favorite. Chiefs haven't looked that great. Mahomes looked better last week. Sure. Looked much better than he had been, but he still has 10 interceptions on the year. He's being hit more than he ever had. He's making crazy decisions, just firing the ball up there. He made ESPN went nuts the other night when he made that left-handed toss. Doesn't mean it was a good play. Doesn't mean it was a smart decision to throw the ball left-handed or anything. Those type of plays right there flavor into a playmaking Dallas defense, which still is not very good, but it is an opportunistic defense. You don't, if you give them those chances, they will turn the ball, they will get the ball back for that offense. Um, I think they're going to try to slow it down with the running game here. So I love the under 56 and a half in this game. Yeah. Um, in my notes at the very bottom, I have that I think that everything screams the over. Therefore, I'm taking the under. I lean that way. It won't be an official pick for me, but I will probably privately bet it. I just I find more value in Kansas City. So I will be taking Kansas City minus two and a half in that same game. I do like the under, though. I think the under is a great play. I mean, this, this, this total has been bet like crazy. It opened at 53 and a half. Yeah. It's going three points up at this it's, point. It's going to land on 54, I think. Oh, I think yeah. Yeah. No. Because it's, smart bettors are going to come in and you're like, oh, it's an under bet all day long. And it's going to come back down a little bit. And it's, yeah, like you said, I think it's going to be like a 30 to 24 kind of game. It'll be a, a nice scoring game and everything. But it's you're, you're basically telling me this needs to be a 30 to 30 kind of game to hit 57 points. It, it's, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, how it works. The Sharps bet it from 53 to 56, and they're hoping that the public continues to bet it either way, and then they're just going to slam the under. They're trying to move the line up slowly. They see when a professional gambler walks into a sports book, they place a bet. It could be $1,000, 10000 whatever they bet. They, in the beginning of the week, they don't bet nearly as much as they do by the end, unless it's an insane spot where they can't help it. And that's their pick right there. That's the perfect number. They're going to bet that up. So you're going to place that bet, and that line's going to move because they're considered, quote-unquote, a sharp, and they, they influence markets. Us, the public, we don't really do that. You know, Like, yes, we, are, we have a gambling show. They don't know who we are. We're random people behind a the phone. They don't know who we are. They know but, we're the number one gambling podcast out there, though. They should. If they don't, they should like, follow, and subscribe. I'll tell you that. Right. But for that reason, our boy, Greggy Gersh, follow on Twitter. Yes, please. I like the over. Uh, sorry, I like the under. But my play is going to be Kansas City minus two and a half. I told you last week, if you watched, I will fade Dallas until I'm blue in the face from now on. Similar to how I want to fade one of your picks, but I'm not going to because you're on it. <laughs> Um, it's just a, it's a numbers thing for me. Not every, the teams can't cover every single game. It just doesn't happen in the NFL. Patty Mahomes and the Chiefs look like they were all the way back last week against the Raiders. Yes, the Raiders stink. They're in shambles. They have on and off the field issues. But Dallas' defense hasn't been great. 
Like, yes, they they turn the ball over every now and then. But they still have given up 255 passing yards through the air. Um, Diggs has been playing. Travion Diggs playing great football. You know, least league in interceptions. But he's not going to be able to keep up with the speed. There's like Tyreek, Tyreek Hill or Michael Hardman. One of these guys is going to break off a massive play, give them the lead. Um, the one thing I am concerned about is uh, Travis Kelsey. He still stinks. I don't know what his deal is. I don't know what happened to him, but he really can't seem to catch a football. But um, like I said, I don't think Dallas can cover every game. Mahomes is going to take a step back and look like the Mahomes of old. And Dallas, after a big win, a dominating win, is going to be sitting in a little, a little bit of a letdown spot. Nothing crazy. I have a massive letdown spot. It's my letdown of, letdown of the month. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any official stats because the against the spread stats don't back me up for the, for the uh, Chiefs just because they haven't been good. But under a field goal... I'm going to take Patrick Mahomes against a bad defense after they just look really good. Looks like they had got things back on track, and I do lean the under as well. I think it's, I think it's, I like the under. You're gonna make, you're gonna talk straight into making an official pick. That's, That's exactly what I want to hear. I wrote that, That's I wrote what we want to hear. I wrote that first. I was like, you know what? No, I kind of like Kansas City better. Love it. Love that pick. All right, we're going to go back to the, the chalk. Right, we're going totals. Uh, I'm going to let you choose. Do you want me to go with the – you guys want the over or do you want the under first? Oh, it's the overs club, baby. Going overs all day, right? New Orleans Saints, Philadelphia Eagles, over 43 points. I know we say don't bet your team. Don't bet your team. You know what? It's in a row. We're betting the team right here. Two We're weeks not in a row. On We're not betting on them. Did I bet the Eagles last week? Yes, you did. You bet the under last week. And I hit it. That's all that matters. <laughs> That's right. Uh, that one was getting close for right. a while. <laughs> I, so that fumble returned by Darius Slay really almost killed me. Yeah. Um, over 43 points here in this game. Uh, both of these, these two teams, they can sneakily put up some points, even with Jameis Winston out of the lineup now. Trevor Simeon, T- Taysom Hill, they've kind of held it together a little bit in that passing game. Um, they're still seeing Marquez Callaway get some you know, yards. Deontay Harris is getting some looks and everything. Uh, there's a good chance that Alvin Kamara returns to this game as well, which will be huge for that offense. Yes, Kamara hasn't had the Kamara season that we're used to with Drew Brees, but he's still a hell of a running back. And he goes against an Eagles defense that is 20th in the league against the run, giving up 117.3 yards per game on the ground. And they're susceptible to running backs and tight ends, like we've said for the past weeks that I've told anyone who fakes picks against the Eagles. The Eagles secondary is not awful. Linebackers are the absolute worst in the NFL. They cannot cover tight ends or running backs. And you're telling me you can get Kamara out there who's going to get some chances for receptions? Love it. Absolutely. On the Eagles side of the ball, we found our identity. We were a running football team. We went from being a team that did not run the ball at all in the beginning of the season that had about four rushing attempts per game. We are now the number four rushing attack in the NFL, led by Jordan Howard and Boston Scott. Well, this week, Miles Sanders is more than likely going to be back into this game. And they, they've come out and said that he is the bell cow. He is the starting back. I think he is going to have a monster game now that we are actually running the ball because he was still being pretty explosive, only getting five to 10 carries a game. Now you're looking at maybe 15 to 20 carries. I love what I can possibly get out of him. The Saints, they do have a good run defense. Not going to lie. They do. It's not bad. However, their secondary has not been that great. They rank 26th in the NFL in yards allowed per game in, in over the air, 264.9. Jalen Hurts, he can still sling it a little bit. No, he is kind of a noodle arm. He can't throw it, you know, 60, 70 yards like some of the best quarterbacks can. But he's shown some really good signs in the past few weeks, and they have really tailored the game, game plan around the play-action pass, which has been absolutely huge. And he's been doing a very good job moving around in the pocket, buying time, extend the play, and find guys out there. Devontae Smith, who Billy and I was saying to Billy before the show, uh, hands up, I was wrong. Devontae Smith is very good wide receiver. He's going to be very good for a long time. He has come on of late. If anyone reads Pro Football Focus, he's been ranked the number one wide receiver in the NFL for the past four weeks. Um, Dallas Goddard is expected to be back in this game as well after leaving the last, this last week early with a concussion. Um, some trends for this. The over is 16-5 and five in the Saints' last 21 following a straight-up loss. It's also hit in three of the Eagles' last four matchups. So give me over 43 points. Hmm. Interesting. Just let you know. Two weeks in a row. Bet nine a team. See how it goes. Like you, 
I will be also be betting on my team. I am taking the Steelers plus six against the Chargers. Sprinkle on the money line. Sprinkle, uh, sprinkle, baby. First off, in what world are the Chargers better than the Steelers with or without Big Ben? The answer is oh, never. Well, also, uh, what's his face? Mega Fitzpatrick is out. No, Minka was out last week. He should be back this week. Uh, I don't know. We might, we might have to look into that one. I, heard a rep- I read a report today that he was still going to be out with COVID. Regardless. <laughs> Regardless. <laughs> the Chargers are playing like this little dink and dunk offense when it comes to their passing game. The quarterback's coach that coached Drew Brees for a decade is now over there trying to implement that offense. <clears throat> and it just doesn't work for... Um, Justin Herbert, who's got a massive arm, massive flow, great wide receivers. They're just not making full potential of the offense. And doing things like that, the short dinks and dunks, feed right into the Steelers' defensive game plan week after week. Covering those flats is what they do best. Jumping out in front, that's honestly what they do best, especially in the secondary. Um, The Steelers are a team that I love to bet on, especially when they're the underdogs. And the Chargers have just been a fade pretty much all year just because you don't know what their status will be every week to week with Justin Herbert and whether they're actually going to play well or not. Um, Frustrating team. If Big Ben is back, I love the over and rushing yards for Najee as well. I said it last week, Big Ben might up not playing, but we recorded that after. Uh, we heard that before. Um, yes, the O-line is bad. Doesn't matter. The Chargers are giving up 155 yards per game on the ground, which is 30 yards more than any other team. I love the rushing game. I'm going to be on the Steelers. Steelers, real quick. 33, 15, and 3 in the last 51 games is a dog. Uh, Chargers 5, 12, and 1 in the last 18 is a home favorite. Road team in this in this matchup, 4 0 against the spread. Underdogs, 4 0 against the spread. Interesting. I like it. I um, don't. I will I say, like take it. this line now before they announce that Big Ben is back, if he's back. Don't know if he's actually got the COVID shot, the, the little vaccination. Um, we never confirmed or denied that on FFD. I probably should look that up. But either way, it's just a great spot. Mike Tomlin loves that speech of, oh, they, they, don't, they don't believe in us no more. We're going to go out there and show them who we are, and that defense is going to play their ass off, and they're just going to get to the quarterback and create hell for that, for that O-line. Give me the Steelers. Sprinkle the money line. I like it. I don't dislike that one at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't dislike it. Maybe the Steelers go on a little run down here down the stretch for the playoff they run. Need to. They need that's, to. That's the vision. Remember, they had the, remember when everyone thought the Browns were going to be really good? Yikes. They stink. Um, I do like that. I might, I don't know if I'll go money line with you, but I might sprinkle that spread. Uh, well, we'll see. Maybe, maybe we'll dabble. You know what? I oh, like to do it. For sure. Should we have to do I didn't sprinkle the money line yet, but I have bet the plus six for sure. Um, uh, all right. I'll break up the, uh, total parade that I have here Thanks. and I will talk about the one spread pick that I do have, which is actually a two, two picks I have in this one game. <laughs> So uh, we're gonna take also be a total. Fan. They will have a total, and then we'll talk about that afterwards. <laughs> um, but we're gonna have the Green Bay Packers laying two against the Minnesota Vikings. We will also take the under forty nine and a half points in this game. Um, Packers, yeah, they might have just lost star running back Aaron Jones for the next two to three weeks, possibly with the, with the sprained MCL, I believe it was. Yes, um, not a great deal. He's on my fantasy team. Don't absolutely love that. However, he really hasn't been all that great, so it's not that much of a loss for me. Uh, his backup, A.J. Dillon, Boston College Pride. He's pretty fucking good. He's Huge not block. too shabby at all. He is massive. I want to see him and Saquon next to each other and see whose quads are bigger. He makes um, Saquon's quads look small. It's, it's This guy's a tank. Um, it was a surprise pick last year when they took him in the second round out of Boston College, but right now you're seeing why he was so important and what he can do. He had two touchdowns last week, 128 total yards. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. Now he's going to get the full complement of the feature back role. I expect him to see over 20 touches in this game, including probably about three to four receptions out of the backfield because he is shifty. He can actually move for a big guy. Um, it's He's not. He's pretty fun to watch and everything. Um, 
Vikings coming off a big win against the San Diego Superchargers. Um, but they have been in extremely inconsistent this season. Uh, I said preseason, I liked the Vikings. I thought they were going to be a good team. I don't know what we're going to get out of them every single week. Kirk Cousins puts up blank numbers, but I still don't know what I'm going to get. The passing attack hasn't been great. Dalvin Cook looks like he should play and all, but who knows what's going on with him. That is a massive distraction looming over the entire team there with his allegations against him and everything. Uh, We'll see what happens there. Green Bay's defense, it's not too bad. They're pretty decent. Um, Obviously, they shut out Seattle last week, who has not been playing that great. Uh, Russell Wilson clearly was very rusty coming back. Take that out, though. They're still third in the NFL in total yards of offense allowed, third in passing yards allowed, and points scored against. Um, They do pretty good on the defensive side. They found some things. The only questionable guy they have this week is Rayshon Gary, uh, but he's trending to play to give him a third pass rusher potentially, which is good. Um, so they will need that. Really, what you're te- also telling me here with when I go with the under point and everything and the spread, Aaron Rodgers is going to score more than 20 points for the Packers. He's going to put up at least three touchdowns. Minnesota has allowed at least 20 points in six of nine games that they've played this season. I don't think Rodgers is going to have any issue doing that, and I think that their defense is going to have no problem stopping Kirk Cousins. Maybe giving up 17 points or so. Uh, I could see this game being like a 27-17 kind of game. Um, the under for these two teams, under has cashed now in the Packers' last seven games. It's also been four games for the Vikings, four straight at home for the Vikings. Uh, between these two teams, just historically, the under has hit six of the last seven times they played in Minnesota. Love the under in this game. Some trends that back the spread for this one. Packers are 6-0 and in their last six as a favorite, as well as 5-0 and in their last five on the road. Uh, Vikings, on the other hand, they're 5-11 and against the spread in their last 16 games. Packers minus two, under 49 and a half in this game. Quick question. Nothing, okay. nothing really to do with either one of your picks. Do you happen to have a line for any time A.J. Dillon touchdown? Uh, and I'm while you're this. looking that up, see if you also have over under for Aaron Rodgers two and a half touchdowns. Okay. While you're doing that. I'm going to give you my letdown of the week. The letdown of the week. I do not have either of those yet. Okay. I like A.J. Dillon, especially if it's plus money. I doubt it will be just because he's the starter, but um, maybe plus two touchdowns. Over one and a half touchdowns, kind of like that. Fun fact for Morgan. Morgan had uh, A.J. Dillon first touchdown score this past week against the Seahawks. Uh, It wasn't I was in the card or anything, but I did play that. I was hanging out with one of my buddies watching that game. Uh, and we were watching. We didn't. We weren't watching. The Eagles were on at the same time, and he, of course he scored in the fourth quarter. And it was the first touch. I was like, "What just happened? How did this take this long?" Yeah, uh, that, that was, game the easy, was wild. Speaking of which, that was the easiest under of all time. As soon as I saw snow in the forecast, even though it didn't snow in the game, you throw snow in to a rusty Russell Wilson who's coming off a finger injury. Easy under. Easiest under of all time. If you want some great comedy. Go fast when the FFD episode drops tomorrow morning. Go watch the um, the Russell Wilson reaction, little <laughs> little fingering, little um, finger stamp action. Yeah, I think he gets two touchdowns, so maybe a two plus something like that. Just look out for that. I really like that. I think he gets one receiving, one rushing. Uh, anyway, let down spot of the week. It's gonna be a Washington football team after that big win against uh against the Buccaneers. Classic letdown spot, man. It's worked every week so far. This is the spot. You know why? Because Cam says, I'm back. I'm back. Christian McCaffrey, I'm back. Everybody's back. Defense getting healthy week after week. Listen, Washington football team put a beat down on the Bucks. The game looked closer than it was. The game was not close. I watched most of the game. Um, we all saw that coming, right? Washington football team just beats the balls off the Buccaneers. That was easy, right? Makes sense. You take away what happened last week. Washington football team has covered one game. Last week was their second time covering. They're not going to cover this one. It's not going to happen. Bad again. Bad cut off of back to back. No way, Jose. Um, the Panthers D much more well-rounded than the Buccaneers. Number one in 
uh, against the pass, giving up 175 yards per game. Every other team is giving up at least 200 yards per game. Uh, one of the strongest run defenses in the league, especially now that they're getting pieces back on that D-line. Uh, they were number one for a long time until about three weeks ago. I don't know who ran a muck on them, but somebody ran like for 175 yards and messed up their uh, messed up their averages. But still a great run defense. Listen, Taylor Heineke, it's a great story. It really is, you know, that diving thing in, into the end zone in the playoffs against the Buccaneers. Maybe the Tyler Heineke thing against the Bucs that, that did it. But listen, this story is set for Cam Newton. It's set. The comeback season. This man was eating Wheaties on the couch last week, dreaming about this. He's not going to let it down. Cam is vengeful. He's going against his old coach, trying to beat the beat the shit out of Ron Rivera, and I think he does it. Um, Cam being back gives the, gives the Panthers the spark that they need to stay in the playoff hunt, and uh, I think Cam gets it done, especially this week, against a real weak defense who will be without, um, what's his name, Chase Young. He's gone for the year. No Montez Sweat. Secondary's worst in the NFL. Cam's going to eat him up, eat him up, eat him up, eat him up. Panthers minus three and a half is my play. Probably my favorite play of the week. I think they win by 10. I like that play a lot. I'm actually going to piggyback off it because I have Panthers football team under 43 points uh, will be one of my plays for this one. Everything Billy said exactly. However, both of these teams still stink on offense. They're still not good. Um, Cam Newton, you're talking about a guy, yes, he put a nice spark. He recalled in two touchdowns last week. Good story. I think he's going to absolutely help that team a ton, like Billy said. That team, real, you know, realistically, all they're missing is solid quarterback play, and they're probably a good playoff team. They have a very strong defense. They have weapons. You know, they have a pretty good receiving core, albeit very underperforming this season. They actually lead the league in drops between Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore. Um, but they have a lot of talent out there. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey, we know who he is. Um, he's one of the best running backs in football, has he been hurt, hasn't got it going. Um, I love this under in this one because while Newton's there and proud of Spark, he is still learning this Matt Rule playbook. He got, just got thrown out there last week and everything, learning a brand new playbook for a new coach and everything that he had never been with before. Um, that to me is just like the whole playbook is not going to be available to him yet. I don't get the sense just from watching Cam Newton over the years and listening to him and everything, that he's a guy who's going to know page 87 of the playbook after two weeks. It's going to take him a little bit to catch up. Uh, he might have up to page 20 of the playbook ready to go. So they're going to be in a limited action with that. It's going to be a lot of Cam Newton running the ball, a lot of read option, maybe triple read options with Chuba Hubbard and Christian McCaffrey, end arounds with Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore to get him in space, get them the ball where they're already running. That's going to slow the pace of this game down and keep that clock running. Um, Washington's offense, poor Ter- Terry McLaurin makes any quarterback look good, but it's tough when you're the only guy. You're the only one out there each week. Heineke, like Billy said, great story. You know, Good for him. He's made, made the most of what probably was a nothing career for a long look in the whole time. He's made the most of it and everything. He looked to be somewhat decent last week. He's not the guy. Everyone knows he's not the guy. Washington needs an actual quarterback. Um, you know, it's there's one of the other things I really like about this one, kind of coming back, bouncing back to the Carolina point. This is the third starting quarterback this year for Carolina. There's no chemistry between those receivers and Cam Newton. There is no timing done with any of them. Cam Newton historically has Donovan McNabb syndrome, where he throws the ball into the ground. He throws it low and he throws bullets, no matter if you're five yards or 25 yards away from him. If you have not been played with that before and you're not prepared for that, you're not going to be able to get the ball moving or anything. Washington's offense, yes, go ahead. UCLA is covering. 18 minutes left. In the Love Continue. it. Love to see that. Um, like we said, again, bouncing back. Washington's offense, has been mediocre. They're only putting up 20.6 points per game right now. Uh, they face the elite Carolina defense. It's only giving up 19.3 points per game. I think this is going to be another one of our favorite slugfest games where these two teams just beat each other up, kind of like it was Panthers-Giants a few weeks ago. And that game was six to three going into the fourth quarter. Um, some trends here: the under is ten and three in the Panthers' last thirteen games overall. For the Washington, uh, under is eight and two in their last ten following an against the spread win, as well as four and zero in their last four straight games. So, give me the under forty-three in this game. 
Don't hate it. Don't hate it. I don't think that Washington football team scores many points. So I definitely don't, don't hate it. 21 uh, to 10 football game. Yeah. I, I do agree that they're going to run the, the option a lot, some RPOs, end arounds, you know, keep it simple. I see a lot of Wildcat, too. I think they have a lot of direct straps to McCaffrey. No, I don't think so. I, that I don't think so. He's too valuable. They won't do that for him. He just came back from injury. You don't want to. There's no need. Yeah. There's no need for it. Yeah. We'll see. You gotta use your weapons. Um, BJ Moore's been under center for a couple Wildcats. Maybe he'll be back there. Maybe. Uh, I'm gonna do a little teaser. The first leg is guaranteed. I love this one. The oh, second boy. one, I'm kind of oh, like okay. on and off. First one's Bills minus one. Hold on. Bills are gonna win. I just don't know if they're going to cover the seven. The line has not moved at all. So. There's equal money, seems like, going on both sides, or zero people are betting it. Um, the only reason why I'm taking essentially a money line on the Bills because I don't know what kind of Colts team we're going to get. Are we going to get the first half against uh, the Colts last week where they rushed for 100 yards in the first half and are just completely dominating the game? Or are we going to get the second whole half in the Colts that we got last week where instead of running the ball like they should have 20 more times and just winning by 40, they let Carson Wentz throw his left hand five times and <laughs> run the ball four times the entire half. Not only don't cover, but hardly win the game against a bad Jaguars team. Um, and the second one is going to be the Seahawks. I think they do get back on track after a full week of practice, after hopefully what's a fluke game for Russell Wilson and his little finger issue uh, at plus eight and a half. I like that. If you don't like that, I like the Steelers as well. But just the number thing, I'm a numbers guy. The teaser works better when you have the two and a half as opposed to the six. So I'm going with the eight and a half. If you find, if the lines move around, come Sunday, the official play will be out. But I do think I'm going to stick with the Seahawks and the Bills as my official teaser. And that's all I have for NFL. You have one more pick? I do have one last one. We'll make, I'll make it a quick one. One last total. Uh, Cardinals Seahawks under 50 points. Uh, there's too many question marks right now with both of these two teams. Ideally, in a perfect world, they've got good offenses, even though Seattle hasn't really played like it this year. This should be an easy over, right? I don't know if Kyler Murray's going to play in this game. It's questionable. It'll probably end up being a game time decision with his pec injury. DeAndre Hopkins isn't banged up. We'll see if he goes. If Kyler doesn't go, Colt McCoy's injured as well. He might not go in this game, going to the third string, Cole Strevler. At quarterback, I have no faith in him getting reps with that first team offense and being able to put up numbers. Russell Wilson, yeah, I think he'll bounce back. He won't be as bad as he was last week, where he was 20 for 40 for 177 yards and two picks. Um, I think he'll be much better. He'll start to you know, knock the dust off a little bit and get that chemistry back with Lockett and Metcalf, but it's still going to take a little bit of time. Arizona has a sneaky good defense, it's not too bad. Um, they've got good players in that secondary. They get good pressure on the quarterback. Seattle has historically had a very poor offensive line with Russell Wilson, and he takes a lot of hits. Um, I think Chandler Jones this is going to be a big Chandler Jones game. Two and a half, two and a half sacks, two plus two plus sack, sacks for him in this one for sure. Um, common sense also with this one is with these two teams generally being be a higher scoring game. You think that divisional matchups against rivals typically they're looking to beat each other up kind of show dominance over one another physically, who's going to have be the tougher team and everything. That plays to a low-scoring game. That plays to a l low affair where these two teams are just focused on hitting each other more so than actually getting the ball into the end zone. Um, what was once a huge home field advantage for Seattle, they've lost three of their last four home games. I kind of think – I think that could happen. I don't know if – I think Arizona could really do something here. Um, I don't think Seattle's going to be able to put up a ton of points. Maybe they get to 20. Like that, maybe that's about it, though. But I don't think it's any much more. 24-20 kind of game could be this what we're looking at. Um, trends right now, under is 10-3 and three in the Cardinals' last 13 road games. Uh, the under is also 15-3 and three in the Seahawks' last 18 overall. Also, I got more. Under is 6-0. Oh, and oh. There's oh, wait, there's more. The under is 6-0 and oh in the Seahawks' last six as an underdog. Uh, While well, the under is also 7-0 and in the Cardinals' last seven as a road favorite. A lot of trends pointing to the under here. We're going to ride the trends. Under 50 is going to be the play. That's a beautiful thing. I don't hate that. Um, I'm going to talk real quick about two college basketball plays that I love. One I absolutely love uh, is 
probably one of my favorite plays I've had so far, um, at least to the public. There's a couple that I just took, just just I thought it would be great, but you don't even know all that. My favorite play for tomorrow, and at least, at least for uh, at least the early lines that I have, is going to be Ole Miss minus three and a half against Marquette. I've already bet it. Uh, Ole Miss, I'm sorry, Marquette is coming off a massive win against the number ten number ten team in the country in, in Illinois. For those of you who didn't watch the game or look at the highlights or look at the stats sheet, Illinois probably played their worst game in a decade. Turned the ball over 23 times, shot 38% from the field, committed 24 fouls, all, and they still out-rebounded Marquette 48 to, 48 to 23. They still lost. How, how does that happen? I don't know. Marquette just got the better of them that night. doesn't matter. Um... I think this line is just filled with value because of that. Give me the give me the Rebels. They're a fast-paced team. They will outrun them, outshoot them, and they they play very disciplined basketball. They're a fast team. Doesn't turn the ball over. Um, their last outing, don't remember off the top of the head. They shot over fifty percent. They had seven turnovers. And, you know, yes, they will turn the ball over more than seven times. Yes, they might shoot a little bit under 50%. But the sure ship put up more than 65 points, which is what Marquette's scoring on average. Give me Ole Miss. I think this game is a double-digit game. I personally make this line, if I was a bookmaker, minus eight just to cover my ass. But I do think this is a double-digit win for Ole Miss. The other one is going to be Ohio State. Again, Xavier, I will be on the under 142. This line opened up at 139. It's already moved to 142. Guess what? The line's moving the wrong way. Let's get weird, boys and girls. Both these teams, great on defense. Not great on offense. Both these teams give up less than 70 points per game. Both of them shoot about 65% from the free throw line, which is below average. Both teams outside the top 100 when it comes to three-point percentage. Both these teams, they don't get the line much, both outside the top half. Take the under. Take the under. Take the under. 142. Smart man. I don't have like three, four more Boy picks knows what he's talking on. about. Like, I got I to gotta dig into my research for some uh, college, college plays. Mm-hmm. But, hey. You know, I, I'm on with you. I will ride with you on both of those picks. I trust you. You I do your homework. Miss. You know what you're talking about. I love all I will miss. absolutely jump in there with you on those. There's a lot of plays today. I just For the, for the listeners at home, I just started a new job, 9 to 5. Not used to the hours. <laughs> <laughs> a nor- it's, you know, just, a, just a normal person at shift and everything. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, no, I'm just not even that. It's just like I'm not used to like the hours that like I would normally spend doing research, especially for college basketball, because the lines come out like one in the morning and I'm usually asleep now. So a lot of the leans I had for today all hit. I feel so good. I feel so good during the week. The weekends, not so much. I would have went seven and one, possibly eight and one today. Instead I made three three plays, I'm two and L, possibly three and L. So take that with a grain of salt. I think but, winners are winners. Yeah, no, like, I'm happy how the season's going. Uh, I kind of have a good feel on a few teams. I was telling Morgan when he was on vacation I might have a trend. I kind of, I told you I was going to do the research. I want to see how, when I get a bigger, I want to see by the end of this weekend, and then I will talk about it. I think I got something. I, I think it's coming together. We'll see. There's a lot of a lot of the, the team in that conference playing this week, uh, this this week, uh, tomorrow and Sunday. There's so a we'll weird, see. there's a weird one tomorrow. It's a, uh... Penn and I think it's Utah State. And I get, I hear all over it. I can yeah. You'll see that I one on the card tomorrow, boys and I girls. I saw it immediately and I thought of you instantly. I was like, oh That's boy. Game I can't wait to watch. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, we didn't have Ivy League basketball last year. A lot better on Ivy League. They're just, they just cover machines, they hit the over like crazy. But also, I love Mountain West basketball. I love the way it's Whack. played. Whack. I love it. Um, you know, the team just hustle, get to the ground, play great defense, offensive rebound, boxing out. Love it. I love the energy that the that the Mountain West gives you. It's gonna be a good game. And uh take the dog. That's all I'm gonna say. Take the dog. 
Well, with my pen boys. Yes, sir. We're Quakers. We're Quakers here. <laughs> um, Morgan, what do you got going on this weekend? Uh, we got a lot. We're back in the ring of things. We're ready for NBA. We are getting diving headfirst in now. Uh, so we'll have some more NBA stuff coming out and more talk NBA picks uh, as I kind of get back into the swing of things. I'm still on vacation time currently. Um, so, But my, the NFL article is all but six sentences away from being completed. So huh. I'll send that to the editor shortly. Uh, it'll have more in-depth of everything we spoke about this evening, including my illustrious 500 record that I have for the season. Um, so definitely take a look at that. We're going to keep pushing that number back up higher and higher. Um, but you can take a look at that. We will constantly have more content coming out for you guys at Ben the Diagonal. We will have our picks posted each day. We've had special guest picks in the past few weeks. I'm sure we will have some more special guest picks coming up down the line. Uh, we got some fights coming up in a couple of weeks that are pretty big and interesting that we want us to take a look at. Uh, Tommy Fury by knockout over Jake Paul, calling it Don't right do now. It. Don't do Tommy it. Locked in already. Okay. Don't do Jake it. Paul stinks. There's no knockouts allowed in that. I'm telling you, you keep doing that. I'm doing it in this one. It's going to happen. No, it's against the rules. I told you the last three times you've made this bet. <laughs> I can't help it's it. It's in the I contract. See, I want to see his ass on the ground. Uh, so we'll have that. <laughs> but we'll have a ton of other stuff coming on. Obviously, college basketball is in the swing of things. NBA is in the swing of things. Check us out, Bang the Diagonal. You can check me out at Mo Watts 26 You can check out Billy Boy here at Billy FFD, where we are having our stuff. We are communicating back and forth with the people who tweet with us. We've been getting a lot more interaction on tweets in the past few weeks, which is awesome, whether it be via likes, via just conversation and stuff. That is what we love to see. Um, we love yeah. to chirp back. We love to talk with all of anyone who's looking at these things. You know, just talk sports. It's just dudes being dudes. You know, we like to talk sports. It's not always just about gambling and everything. We can sit there and talk sports all day with anybody if you want to jump in there and ask why we like a pick or something, what, what you like about that. We'll, I, we will go back and forth all day. Um, Tilly, you got anything cool on the radar? Yeah, I mean, I got the DFS article last week. It kind of ruined my day that Big Ben got COVID because I wrote the entire article, have a whole plan for the weekend laid out. Because, you know, I don't know, you don't, you know, the DFS thing, you know, you got to get to manage a salary. Big Ben let me get all these great players at a discount because I had a cheap quarterback that was going to give me like 10 points. He was out. I freaked. I had to rewrite the whole article at four in the morning. That won't happen this week. Um, so look out for that. Shout out to Hutch last week for being on the show. He wants to come back desperately. He wants us to add a third episode a week. I told him that can't happen. I don't have time. <laughs> uh, I ran it by ran it by Joe Green, our producer. He said no shot. I need to have a life with my wife. But um, we will have him back on the show, especially when there's big cards. I do believe he's going to Vegas for that for the big UFC card. But um, we're gonna work something out. But uh, if you guys liked him, he also brought in the highest views last week. Big deal. It's a big deal. Like um, that. He said he told one person. I don't believe him. Don't believe him <laughs> one bit. Uh, anyway, you can find me, Billy FFD. As always, like, follow, subscribe, talk shit, talk nonsense. Give us your best bets down below. We're trying to have fun out here, boys and girls. I do three podcasts a week. When it comes down to this, this is my favorite one. I, lo I love doing this with Morgan. I do it all day. He knows that we sit in this we sit in this video chat for two more hours usually. So, like we Fox start we start the video about an hour an hour and a half before we actually start recording. Mm -hmm. uh, we literally we hopped on the channel tonight, and first thing was, man, I missed you. Yeah. This is it's we hadn't been able to do this in a week. It felt like it's been a year. Uh, it was so good to get back and everything. Just talk like I said, dudes being dudes, just dudes talking sports dudes. and everything, shooting the shit. That's what it's all about. Yes, sir. Like I said, like, follow, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow, I think. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll